Welcome back to Ocarina of Time 3D. We've got two of the Spiritual Stones so far, the Kakiri Emerald and the Goron Ruby, but we've got a little bit of prep work to do before we can go and get the next stone, the Zora Sapphire. So let's trek up Death Mountain and get a little bit of a power-up. Well, before we actually get to trek up the mountain, we gotta go on the mountain path, then we get to the mountain peak, and as you can tell by the regions of this game, they kinda struck on the whole creativity department. But when you consider that the Gorons probably came up with most of the names themselves, it starts to make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> I guess Place of Tasty Rocks was vetoed then. That, or they could name it Lavos, Big Fire or something. <laughs> now, if you blow up that rock back there and go down to the cavern, there's actually a cow there. And did we mention that Death Mountain is actually an active volcano? And apparently, it's only activated by the sound of a child's footstep, because it only erupts when you're walking on it. It's a very malicious mountain. Yeah, and it doesn't even erupt like normal volcanoes with magma. No, instead it's gonna rain death fire upon you. Periodically! It's a good idea to bring a fairy with you. Oh, and of course a Hylian shield, because if you bring a Deku shield, it'll one, burn up the shield, and two, you won't be able to turtle your way to victory. There's a replacement in Dodongo's cavern, but if you've already used that up, tough shit, you'll have to walk all the way back to Kokiri Force to get a new one. I see you went with the sniping option there, Tom, but other than sniping, you could also go with the stealth method, which might be handy for you and Tom, the master of stealthing, to give it a try. <laughs> oh, you're so sarcastic and will be fired eventually for your insolence. Uh, it's pretty easy to stealth by them. All you do is stop once they turn pink and you can climb right past them. Well, I have an innate fear of spiders and even sneaking by them, you know, gives me the shit, so what are you going to do? Yeah, also watch out for the tech tech on that shell. It'll kamikaze jump on you. Yeah, I see you there, Kaporia. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the few times in the entire game you can actually walk past this owl and not receive an MBM length lecture on completely obvious and pointless stuff. Hooray! Enjoy it while it lasts. This is one of six great fairy fountains located in Hyrule, and it's also an example for potential music based puzzles essentially being reduced to just play Zelda's lullaby. I still love the fact that you can bring up the songs, because I was always, in the original version, I was always forgetting them, especially the warping song, so it's just nice to have a little piece right there that you can bring up and boom, there you go. You could give me a moment here, Tom. I'm going to become a complete graphics whore. The graphic update does amazing things for the fountain. Like, they add this waterfall wall around the entire area, they added pillars, the torches are actually torches this time, instead of cone shapes with a fire texture put on top. Is it me, or did they not do much for the fairy herself, though? Nothing. All they did was make her boobs less pointy. Yeah, it's less Madonna-esque, if you will. Also, apparently being granted magical powers allows you to dance wider than you've ever danced before. Way to go, Link. The hula hoop method of upgrading. Also along with magic, you get the spin attack, which was first introduced in A Link to the Past. It was a secret technique used by the Knights of Hyrule, and it was taught to you by your uncle before he told you that Zelda was your... Excuse me! Wait, messenger boy?! Hold on, messenger boy?! Lady, <laughs> I prevented an entire race of retarded mountain rock people from starving to- Wow, that sounds way more heroic in my head. Yeah, Link, you should really think before you put your mouth into action. Let's go get another magic spell. But before we do that, we can actually climb aboard an avian companion and fly across the land of Hyrule. Clearly the inspiration for Skyward Swords. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, it's Skyward Sword. Singular, not plural. Although Skyward Swords, dual wielding while in the sky, would have been pretty fucking bitchin'. I think I always call it swords, because I consider that there's two sword characters, so my head just randomly puts that S there. Yeah, now, you may be thinking, wow, this would look really good with the 3D turned on, and you'd be right, it kind of does look pretty good with the 3D turned on, but since my capture device cannot capture 3D, you're stuck with this. Really? I was thinking, wow, this would have looked so much better if it was actually daytime and I could see the detail instead of black outlines. Thanks, Kaporia, just drop me on some random roof, why don't you, you lazy asshole. Well, hey, we get a reward for actually breaking and entering this house. A piece of heart. <laughs> and a captive cow who, if you play a pony's song next to him, it will fill up an empty bottle with Lon Lon milk. The way I think of it is, is that you make them depressed and homesick enough that they just give you the milk to get you to go away and leave them alone. 
That's bad enough for cows out on the ranch, you know, in the open pastures. This one's locked inside a house. And while milk is a decent healing item and you get two servings per bottle, I honestly think nothing in the Zelda franchise is ever going to top Grandma Soup from Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. That was two servings and damage upgrade? Yes. Nice. Wrong warp to castle town. Hey, Tom! <laughs> you sly son of a bitch! You didn't tell me that you found a glitch in this game! Yes, I call it the editing glitch. It's super effective and efficient. Well, anyway, we're going to encounter the next fairy on the path to the castle. The fairy that we encountered in the mountain is the Great Fairy of Power. There's also a Great Fairy of Wisdom and a Great Fairy of Courage, obviously based off the pieces of the Triforce. There's also a fourth fairy. The fourth fairy is known as the Great Fairy of Magic, and it's named for the three fairies that give you the magic spells. So, one of two things is going on. Either there's three Great Fairies of Magic, or there's just one Great Fairy of Magic teleporting across Hyrule saying, <laughs> Oh, hey! I don't know you! Oh, I'd love a cutscene where you get in, do, like, Zelda's lullaby, and there's, like, nothing for about ten seconds, and then she just teleports in. Sorry, I'm late. She's wearing, like, a trench coat and fedora and stuff. <laughs> If you notice the colors of the walls in the fairy fountain, they actually give away what kind of blessing you receive from the fairies. Fairies that have red walls give you a magic spell, and fairies that have blue walls will give you upgrades. Nice. No, I never actually noticed that. Yeah, it's one of those weird little things. <laughs> oh, this fairy is super casual. She's lounging around. She's not even going to stand up straight for you. At least the other one knew that you saved the Gorons. This one's just, oh, you're that kid who snuck by earlier. Well, I don't know how I'm going to deal with these, but here, take the spell and get out of here. <laughs> Give your power to the spirit bomb. She's charging up! Run, Link! <laughs> oh, that's cool. He just crystallized the spirit bomb. Man, if the enemies could use that against Goku, he'd be pretty much fucked. Yep. She gives you Dense Fire, which is the first of three spells you'll get in the game, and is the only mandatory one if you're playing the game normally. Yeah. In an interview with uh, Eji Anuma when the game was being made, there were originally going to be three dungeons that were is where you were going to acquire the spells. The original dungeon plan was three young Link dungeons, three adult Link dungeons, and three scrapped spell dungeons. Nice, nice. Yeah, they were going to integrate actions, plot points, and puzzles specifically linked to Link's magical abilities. But then they came to the conclusion that there were already existing items that were much better used as dungeon items as opposed to the spells. Probably for the best, really. See, that's the type of streamlining that works. This also could account for why a certain temple later on doesn't get a dungeon. Yeah. You using a bomb to get to the Great Fairy's uh, fountain really reminds me that I feel, especially in Ocarina of Time, that the bombs increase the possibility for exploration more than any other item in this game. Like, you use them to unblock paths, and you use them to find undercoven hidden grottles, which account for the majority of hidden items in this game. This could actually be the case, or it could just be a personal feeling that I get, because when I got stuck in the Dongo's Cavern as a kid, I just left the dungeon, and I explored the world bombless, and it seemed like everywhere that was cool and interesting needed bombs to access. Then when I got bombs, it just felt like Hyrule opened up to me, and I explored like crazy. Yeah, and flash forward to Wind Waker, it would seem like the hook shot, at least from my experience, is the one that opens up that world the most. Yeah, and really, I love items when they add to the exploration, because to me, exploration is the core element of Zelda. I mean, Miyamoto used his experiences from exploring a forest near his house as the inspiration for the original Legend of Zelda. Oh my god, Link, get out of the way, it's gonna explode! <laughs> I love how you glitch this cutscene with that. <laughs> it's almost like you're damage buffering that, which is the thing you can do with cutscenes and bombs. Look, that speed talk MBM. Oh my god, Link's dead! Oh, he's perfectly fine. Oh, it's okay. Also, I don't know what the owl said, but I'm probably going to paraphrase and say, Hey, Link, you want a good time? Play Zelda's Lullaby. <laughs> what the fuck? 
I don't know, it could have been with the Alistair, or it could have been what I read in a bathroom stall a few weeks ago. Either way, it's the same advice. Lost the guy who sells magic beans. Yes, that is the magic bean seller, and true to his name, he will sell you magic beans. Oh, I thought he'd sell me knives or something. That'd be so much better. Um, when you buy the first one, because they're not very popular, they cost Link 10 rupees, and will increase in price by 10 rupees every single time you buy another one, because that's how capitalism works, kids. All the way up until you get 10 beans. And you can plant them in soft soils where they'll grow into a magic plant and carry you to locations that will have a piece of heart, gold skulltulas, or if you luck out, rupees. Now, is it like instant growth or do you have to wait a certain amount of time for it to activate? You will have to wait a certain amount of time, time being a huge aspect of this game, later on. I never would have guessed. It's not like it's in the title or anything. I originally thought that the magic beans weren't included in the 100% definition of this game. So I asked around, and stupid me, they are included. But the thing is, you only need to buy one, and you never have to use it. You only buy the one magic bean to fill in the inventory slot, and you're good. Now, they're not mandatory for Ocarina, unlike in Majora, where you need them to actually get a certain item to get into the last dungeon. Yeah, the whole point of this is literally just getting upgrades and items, which Ocarina of Time does a lot of. It has a lot of side quests that the whole goal is literally just to pick up stuff, not really to add to the story. Random HFC tidbit, this part contains the most cuckoo usage in any HFC playthrough ever. One of those cuckoo usage just blew my mind right there, Tom. I am not kidding you. I had no, none, not a single idea that you could use the cuckoo to get that piece of heart. I always got the boomerang. You can't even jump to that platform as adult Link. I just don't know what... My life doesn't make sense anymore. Well, I think it's time you had your mind blown for a change instead of blowing the minds. Well, fine, I'll retaliate. In original version, you can use a chicken to fly under the waterfall and get in here. They fixed that in this version. Damn you, Grizzo! Zero out of ten, would not play. Cancelling playthrough. Oh my god, I love the Zorius Domain music. So chill. It is definitely, definitely peaceful. Ocarina of Time was actually the first game that introduced the Zoras as a hospitable race, as opposed to hostile monsters. Um, in all previous Zelda games, Zoras were monsters that would peek their heads out of water and shoot fireballs at you. Or, in A Link to the Past, sell you a set of flippers. Yeah, I remember playing stuff like uh, Link to, Links to the Past after playing Ocarina. I was like, hey, dude, what are you doing? No, 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 I want a silver scale. I don't want a fireball in my face, thank you very much. Yeah, the monster variety of Zoras have only appeared in 2D games, whereas the humanoid versions have only appeared in 3D games, kind of to reduce the confusion. In the 100th issue of Nintendo Power, Miyamoto said in an interview that an area called Zora's Lake was planned to be included in Zelda 64. This may have been during the phase of development when Zoras were still going to be their monster variety. So probably when they opted for these more humanoid forms, that's when they changed it to this village like Zora's Domain. And also, in Oracle of Ages, they included both versions of Zora, so that's actually the game that defines the difference between the two. In that game, they say that the monster kind are river Zoras, and the peaceful kind are sea Zoras. Huh, maybe an interesting topic for a future Zelda, get some Civil War shit going on in there. That would be really cool, because the Zoras, for the most part, they have pretty petty problems. Like, oh, we're kind of frozen in our cave, or oh, there go my babies. No, I want to see some war going up in here. Yeah, if Gorons are like all prideful and stubborn, Zoras are definitely like upper class, kind of like snobbish personalities, I think. They're definitely the isolated, aloof race. Like, I would compare them to elves in Tolkien races. Yeah, and the Gorons would be like dwarves and so on. Yeah, because let's face it, all the Zelda races, you can really do a comparison to these uh, established, fabled races. Behind that waterfall that's right there in the middle of the town, you can actually get a piece of heart when you light up all the torches in the town using the flame by the king. And another secret area that's in here that wasn't... that's not actually in the final version of the game, uh, Zora Domain is believed to be the location of the removed unicorn fountain. Ah, yes. That island that that Zora is standing on, there's an alcove or a little indent in the wall at the bottom of it where Link 
Child Link can't get to it because he can't dive far enough, and Adult Link can't get it because of reasons. So that's where a lot of people think that the fountain was going to be put, and it was going to be where you get the sword beam. I think if I recall correctly, there's a tunnel there, but it just leads to a dead end. Yeah, it's just a little indent. Another positive of the graphical update is that the draw distance in water was increased, so it adds a lot of foreshadowing when you can see that temple at the bottom of the lake. Yeah, it looks, Lake Hylia in general looks pretty great in 3D. It's pretty good. Also in Lake Hylia, there's some scarecrows that, much like the magic beans, are an optional way to get to secret locations. You just play them a song, make sure it's an original song, do not steal. And later on, you'll use that song to summon a scarecrow where you can grapple to secret locations. Okay, I've got one original song, do not steal, A, 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 B. <laughs> I use L, R, L, R, L, R, L, R. <laughs> Just drop the B at the end of that song. Again, do not steal. Also, I'm going to point this out. All of the water in Hyrule comes from Zora's Domain. So when you think about it, all of the water in Hyrule flows under that thing's ass crack and ball sack. I'm gonna let that image sink in here. Especially when this cutscene is gonna give you plenty of time for that imagery to sink in. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I love this. It's the best cutscene in the game. But yeah, the bottle that you get at the bottom of the lake is the only story required bottle, but as I said previously, the Kakariku bottle is much faster, since you have to do the diving game to get to the bottle, and you can't use it as a bottle until after you talk to the king, and after you sit through this cutscene. The best cutscene in the game, mind you, so soak it in. Matthew Matosis said this is kind of like padding, but the enjoyable kind, because it was obviously meant to be humorous. Otherwise they wouldn't have given him weep. That's a sound that just I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> Before continuing on, we're gonna need to get a fish, and you would assume that'd be an easy thing considering that this whole place is filled with water, and you'd assume correctly. Unfortunately, in the shop in this town, they sell fish for 200 rupees, and in the shop there's a Zora who's upset because he can't afford a fish. <laughs> what the fuck? And we thought the Gorons were the stupid race. Okay, okay, the Gorons are proud, the Zoras are proud, Dekus are kind of like the the repressed race in Ocarina terminology. And the Kokiris are the child. Like, could you imagine if all the races went to war? You know, the Zoras would have their spears, Gorons would have their fists, and then the Dekus, like, just pull their slingshots out. It's like, that's not gonna work! Well, they get replaced by bows and arrows within, like, seven years, anyway. Also, to the right of the throne, there's a corner you can clip into to get out of bounds. Water's loaded in the abyss, so you can swim under the king and surface right behind him, skipping the mweep scene. Nice, nice. Yep, when I was doing a bit of research for this part, I actually did the clip, and I forgot to get the Kakariko bottle, and I didn't get Rudo's bottle either, and I didn't know how to clip back in front of the king, so I spent a good 10 minutes trapped in this area trying to find a way to escape, but my only option was to save and quit. Has <laughs> speed running gone too far? Yep, so remember kids, if you're gonna glitch the game, glitch responsibly. <laughs> the entrance to this fairy found was deceptively large. I literally thought just that one little boulder was gonna blow up. Not the entire wall. The boulder's fine, but the entire cave behind it, that rock face is just gone. Yeah, seems legit. I really think that they could have done with more specialized songs, because you use Zelda's lullaby for everything. Like, maybe they could have had a Great Fairy specific song, like Great Fairy's Aria or Great Fairy's Hymn. <laughs> yeah, I'm 12 on the inside. But I do understand that in doing so, you run the risk of having too many songs, when there are some people that actually argue that there's too many songs already in the game. Once again, red walls, so you can figure out what we're gonna get here. Oh hey, it's the spell that I experimented with like once in the original version and then never used again. Oh hey, it's the spell I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> it's the Ferrero Rocher Wind. The Ferrero Rocher Say it with me. Furore. Furore. 
Eh, of course not. You know, the Oracle in the seasons and ages who was relegated to just being, you know, the librarian. I'm so sad that the Oracle games weren't a trilogy like they were supposed to be. Yeah. Ooh, one last little thing before we sign off. The Oracle games, both seasons and ages, are coming to the 3DS eShop by this summer, Nintendo has said. Get them, or I hate you, and I will hunt you down and force you to buy them. I want to get ages, because I never completed that without an action replay, and I don't think I ever beat Seasons legit e either. So I think, you know what, I think it's time. I think it's time for me to go back and just complete these games that I pussied out on. There's your playthrough homework, everybody. Play the Oracle games. Come back when you've actually played them and have become a cool kid. <laughs> there will be a test, and if you don't, MBM will do nothing but speedrunning trivia for every single part. It'll be glorious. What's that fish? Don't mind if I do. Om nom nom. Over the teeth, past the gums. Next dungeon, here we come. <laughs> See you all next time for Jabu Jabu's Belly. See you then. <laughs>